Okay, so I've arrived uh, near the swimming lake. I'm just waiting a little bit because uh, it doesn't open till 8.30. The lifeguard is not on duty till 8.30, so I'm just parked in a little lay-by. And I thought I would take this opportunity to just talk a little bit about the three, three of the main health benefits. So it's no coincidence that I've got the music turned up in the car. I've got my Euphoric Clubland. Euphoric Clubland. Euphoric Playing in the background. But I think that's a good way to kick off discussion of the first benefit, number one, uh, which is improvement of mood. There was a study done on a young, uh, young woman called Sarah who had been on antidepressants uh, since the age of 16 and then by the age of 24, having been on these for a number of years, um, she'd approached Dr. Chris Van Tilliken um, because she wanted to get off the medication because she said that the antidepressants that she'd been taking put her in what she described as a, a chemical fog. Um, so she couldn't, you know, she wanted to get off, she wanted to get off these things and she'd recently, she'd had a child and she wanted a, a future for her daughter that didn't include her daughter seeing her depressed or on, on medication. So this is featured on uh, a TV show that was on the BBC I believe but I found it on YouTube called The Doctor Who Gave Up Drugs. And Dr. Van Tulliken uh, himself practiced open water swimming. Um, and through discussions with Sarah, he found out that she used to enjoy swimming when she was younger, but had just lost touch with it. So this is one reason why he considered open water swimming as a basis for non-drug alternative treatment. So Sarah accompanied the doctor and a, and a couple of other uh, sort of medical professionals to an open water swimming venue and you know begun her journey in open water swimming. And from, from watching the footage, it's clear that that wasn't a straightforward journey, but the outcome of this was that she was able to gradually taper off and eventually completely come off her antidepressant medication. This was someone who was diagnosed with clinical depression, major depressive disorder. And even two years later, uh, the doctor was able to report in a BBC article that I can provide the links to that uh, Sarah was still off this medication. So that's a little bit of an over overview of that case study. Um, there's a lot, there's multi, multiple possible sort of reasons, you know, or explanations of how this is improving your mood. One of these is the release of, of, of sort of beta endorphins. So there's an endorphin release in the body after the immersion in cold water. So the second benefit I'm going to talk about is about um, pain relief. So the one study that I've really spent time reading and looking at is to do with post-operative, uh, post-surgical pain. So this is quite a specific thing, right? So again, the study focused on a young man who had invasive, very significant uh, surgery. So I, I understand he suffered from excessive facial flushing and excessive sweating. So we're talking about invasive surgery to go in under the rib cage and cut uh, some of the nerves that control this this uh, this sweating and flushing. So this is this is drastic intervention in, into the body, and he had stabbing neuropathic pain uh, weeks and weeks after the operation. So he had been prescribed a program of of painkillers um, and physiotherapy, and these after a period of time, I believe after even after about ten weeks, neither of these were working. I think he said with, with in re relation to the painkillers, his pain had reduced subjectively from you know an intensity of about six out of ten to about four out of ten. So there was an improvement, but just a you know a moderate improvement, not enough to really improve um, his sort of quality of life. He was somebody who used to do triathlons. One day he went to a place that he knew, like a rocky patch of coastline, um, alone, and jumped into the cold water because of the way that the rocky coastline was laid out. There was no way to kind of gradually ease himself into the water he had to jump in and he had no choice but to swim for about a minute to before he could exit the water and reach a place of safety uh, and obviously jumping into the cold water is is a is a big uh, no-no when you know when you're recommending somebody to go cold swimming for the first time that's just not how you would do it this guy had the experience of, of open water swimming from his triathlon so he jumped into the cold water he wasn't expecting pain relief he was just looking to distract himself from that pain, he was desperate. Um, so he jumped in the water and he said that his pain 
not only did he not experience any pain entering the water, he just felt numb, but his pain disappeared uh, and it did not come back after that swim. So I guess the point I'm trying to make here is that if you're someone who has chronic pain, obviously chronic pain you know, is, is, is a different thing, but where pain is a part of their life, then look into the potential benefits of cold immersion and cold water swimming. Um, uh, Sarah, the girl that we talked about, did this swimming with a group of people. So you've got uh, the sort of social benefits of doing this in a group that obviously brings safety benefits with it as well. Um, so not swimming alone is a, one of the key safety recommendations. If you're, if you're doing it for the first time, like anything you're trying for the first time, if you've got some other people, some buddies going with you, then it's gonna be that much easier to, to try just to overcome that, that initial resistance. There was obviously the fresh air benefits. You went to a swimming lake, you know, green therapy and blue therapy. Green therapy being out in nature, blue therapy being either in the water or, or next to the water, you know, going for a walk by the sea or a river. So there's multiple sort of, you know, things that were happening along with the actual cold water immersion. So, you know, this is something to look into. Like where I'm going today, for example, is a community of people that go there to swim and dive. There's a lifeguard on duty, um, you know, there's a cafe. Not everywhere you go is gonna have that, you don't necessarily need it, but go with a group of people, it's more fun. So finally, uh, the third point that I wanna talk about just before I start the swim, are the sort of immune system benefits of, of cold water exposure. So this study I looked at, interestingly, it wasn't actual cold water immersion, it was, um, in, it was entering a sort of a cold, a chamber in which the air was reduced to about five degrees. So it was cold air rather than cold water, but cold exposure, and if you've ever come across this, you know, like the Wim Hof method, or you've heard about Wim Hof, a lot of people have. Uh, cold exposure is one of these three pillars of, of, of his method. Uh, the other two pillars of which being sort of mindset and breathing, if I understand correctly. So there was a case study in which a number of young men were exposed to the cold air to in, in order to ascertain any effects on their sort of immune system. The conclusion of the study was that there were immune system benefits from the cold exposure, short-term cold exposure, um, partly involving the kind of increase in, in sort of circulating uh, sort of natural killer cells, natural um, sort of white blood cells. This seems to be one area in which the cold exposure can sort of, you know, um, give your immune system a real boost. So yeah, thanks for watching. I hope it was useful and uh, don't forget to like and share and subscribe if you enjoyed this video.